Don't be fooled by their simplicity. Bacteria are the smallest of free-living organisms. You can squeeze a million of them on the head of a pin. But they are among the most diverse group of creatures on Earth, and our lives depend on them. Scientist Joe Handelsman appreciates their work. Bacteria have more surprises than any organisms because they're so diverse. They have so many different functions. They carry out all of the major functions in the world. They supply us with our nitrogen. They supply most of the carbon to the biosphere. They cycle nutrients. They produce antibiotics. They keep us healthy. They make us sick. They basically control every major function in biology. And they probably do all sorts of things that we don't know about yet because we haven't discovered them all. A bacterium is a single-celled organism known as a prokaryote. Eukaryotes, like us and other multi-celled organisms, occupy a separate branch on the tree of life. Bacteria come in all shapes and small sizes. Most reproduce by simple division. A bacterial colony may grow very quickly. Unchecked. Such rapid reproduction means that bacteria fill available space in a hurry. Though we enter the world bacteria-free, the microbes move in quickly. Most make useful contributions, like the billions of bacteria that break down our food. Bacteria line our skin, intestines, nose, and throat. The bacteria in our mouths alone outnumber all the people on Earth. Less than 1% of bacteria cause disease, but these are the ones that grab headlines. Meanwhile, less infamous bacteria are quietly at work healing disease, flavoring food, washing clothes, and cleaning industrial waste. Bacteria even help provide us with man-made snow. Protein from freeze-dried bacteria helps crystallize water and make fake flakes. As lab techniques improve, we're getting to know more and more of our tiny neighbors, and the possibilities for putting them to work seem endless. Bacteria are the oldest and most diverse of life forms, and we're just getting to know them. A soil sample may contain up to a billion bacteria that we can grow, and as many more that we can't. In fact, most organisms living in soil haven't even been identified. Some bacteria make their homes in the Earth's harshest environments, acid pools, caves without light, even ocean vents where temperatures may hit 450 degrees. Scientists think we may find them on other planets. A meteorite traveling to the Earth from Mars carried with it fossilized shapes that some experts believe look like Earth-bound bacteria. Extraterrestrial rock hunts will look for more proof. For now, we're probing what all this diversity can do for us right here. And some tiny bacteria clearly possess industrial strength. In Yellowstone's hot springs, bacteria able to take the heat also have a knack for breaking down wood fibers. In the process, the wood fibers turn white. Imagine using bacteria instead of chemicals to turn paper white. Such imagining turned into an $11.5 billion industry. Paper companies are replacing chlorine with bacterial enzymes. A much more environmentally friendly bleach. Bacteria have been put to work in gold mines too. At the Homestake Mining Company in Utah, bacteria live in the cyanide baths that help extract the gold. Until Pseudomonas bacteria came to town, the cyanide residue flowed into Whitewood Creek and killed everything living in it.
Today, all the water in the mine flows through these tanks, each housing 20,000 pounds of bacteria attached to plastic discs. As the discs rotate in and out of the cyanide baths, the bacteria get the oxygen they need from the air and the food they need in the water. That's right, they thrive in what's poison to us and they're willing to work 24 hours a day. Within six months, the bacterial workforce turned Whitewood Creek back into a fish-friendly stream. Four million gallons of clean water flow into the creek each day. Just think of the tiny talents we have yet to discover. If pictures of bacteria multiplying and dividing don't whet your appetite, keep watching. In fact, many of our favorite foods boast bacteria as an essential ingredient. Sourdough bread wouldn't be sour without Lactobacillus San Francisco. Just how this bread and bacteria got together remains a mystery. But legend has it that gold miners hungry for a strike left their real dough unattended and it soured on them. People learn to treat sourdough starter with proper respect. At Boudin's Bakery in San Francisco, bakers have been using the same mother dough or starter since 1849. But the secret sour making ingredient wasn't discovered until 1970 when the USDA finally identified the unique strain of bacilli bacteria. Veteran bakers, like Willie Joseph, practically worship the stuff. The fog, the bacteria, the steam out of the oven comes and, and, and all that flavor, all that smell, you know. People get all, mmm, so good. A little milk with your bread? Thank bacteria for that too. Trillions of bacteria break down food in the first of a cow's four stomachs, starting the milk making process. And when the milk is turning into cheese, bacteria go back to work adding flavor and form. Swiss cheese happens when a bacteria called Propriana breaks down and forms gas. The gas accumulates and makes little pockets or holes known in the trade as eyes. You may never see bacteria the same way again. Before the 1940s, in battles between bacteria and man, bacteria often won. We had no weapons against pneumonia, meningitis, tuberculosis, and other bacterial infections. Then, in 1928, a happy accident began to turn the tide. A scientist named Alexander Fleming went on vacation and returned to find a single mold growing in a petri dish where bacterial cultures once flourished. The mold had killed all the bacteria, but Fleming couldn't reproduce it. With the help of other scientists and 10 years of target practice, the newly discovered mold named Penicillium was ready for war. In World War II, penicillin slowed the assault of gangrene and antibiotics looked as though they could rid us of all sorts of deadly bacteria for good. Death. Here's how antibiotics work. When a serious infection sets in, white blood cells, a body's natural line of defense, are overwhelmed. But antibiotics fight back and kill the bacteria without harming human cells. Even in the face of a medical assault, some drug-resistant bacteria survive and multiply. What's more, we're trigger-happy. With the way his eardrums are looking, I think we ought to put him on a preventative antibiotic. 
antibiotic. Okay. And we'll just do that for at least... For Over 18 million antibiotic prescriptions are written each year for colds, which are viruses and unaffected by these drugs. We also feed farm animals antibiotics to make them grow, though no one knows just how the drugs speed growth. Today, 50% of all the antibiotics produced wind up in animal feed. So we're creating super bacteria, resistant to more and more antibiotics in our arsenal. More than a third of the bacteria causing pneumonia are drug resistant. Doctors like Stuart Levy suggest the following prescription. We should not demand them of our physician. We should use them as prescribed. We shouldn't stockpile them, and we shouldn't give them to other people. If we do just that, we will prevent the overuse and misuse of antibiotics and will eliminate a major, maybe 50, 60 percent of the problem of resistance due to antibiotic usage. Infectious diseases caused by simple one-celled bacteria are the single highest cause of death in human history. In the 14th century, bubonic plague carried by fleas hopped across Europe with deadly force. Over a third of the European population died. An even bigger killer, tuberculosis, claimed more than 500 million lives before penicillin fought back. More recently, nasty bugs took lives close to home. In England in 1994, 11 people died from flesh-eating bacteria. This Streptococcus bacterium, capable of consuming flesh at the rate of an inch an hour, is a deadly version of the same bacteria responsible for strep throat. Researchers know more about E. coli. Helpful strains of this bacterium live in our stomachs and help digest food. Billions are no doubt breaking down food into sugars and processing vitamins in your stomach while you're watching this. But cow's intestines carry a different sort of E. coli, and it can kill. Outbreaks of E. coli poisoning, like the one in the Pacific Northwest in 1993, claimed lives and made hundreds of people sick. According to state health officials, there are over 100 cases of E. coli poisoning connected with this case in western Washington alone, and there could be more. Laws requiring restaurants to cook beef at high temperatures have helped. But bad E. coli can turn up in milk and even non-pasteurized fruit juice. Infectious diseases caused by bacteria are still the third highest cause of death in the U.S. But it's proved wise to get to know the enemy. One of the most toxic substances on earth, botulism, has been employed as a weapon of war since the 1940s. Clostridia botulinum paralyzes muscles and kills quickly. But a researcher for Army Intelligence, Dr. Ed Shantz, suspected there might be a way of turning this deadly enemy into a friend. Used in one one-thousandth of a lethal dose, the same poison that paralyzes healthy muscles relaxes them when they're hyperactive. People like Howard Fields, who suffer from a painful disorder that causes muscle spasms are cured with tiny amounts of botulism. In the minute I got my first injections, the pain was gone. I mean, it was just, uh, it was a great, great feeling. My life had been given back to me. It's ironic when you take a uh, toxin that can kill people, and all of a sudden it's saving lives.